thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, we are going to start this tutorial um, by drawing this pineapple. So if you're joining us today for the first time, this is great because um, we've already introduced some of the supplies and now we're just going to go straight into the sketching. I will try to zoom in so you can see my, um, my details, but this is what we're going to produce at the end of the tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to move this um, and I hope you have all your supplies in front of you. We're going to start with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper on the landscape. Okay, and what I want you to do is I'm going to have you start out by framing out your pineapple. So for us, we're going to take our clear ruler and I'm kind of pre measuring. So what we're going to do is draw right in about the middle of the page. I want you to draw a one and a quarter inch wide. So take your ruler, measure about one and a quarter inch wide. Um, you can, you know, kind of, this will be the base of our pineapple. So depending on if you want it centered on the page, um, here, yeah, let's go ahead and center it a little bit. Okay, so move it where the base is gonna be. So one and one quarter of an inch by two inches tall and draw very lightly, okay? I want you to start out by drawing very lightly a rectangle box. Um, if you caught uh, this uh, behind the scenes on my Insta story, then you probably saw me doing this free-handed. Um, this is a tutorial step-by-step -step to show you how I think about framing um, the pineapple. So once you practice and continue to practice and get better at it, you'll have a better sense of um, doing this a little bit more freehand instead of drawing these um, grid lines, okay, or these um, bounding boxes. Um, the next thing I want you to do is um, go ahead and draw an oval, okay? So pineapples start with kind of a rounded, and you can go a little bit outside of the box, but draw an oval, uh, make sure the left side and the right side are equal, or as equal as possible, okay? And that's all you're gonna draw at first. And then the next thing I want you to do is start to draw in the pineapple leaves, okay? These leaves, um, I want you to start by um, drawing almost a curved petal, okay? And we're gonna just, alternate between the left and the right side. Okay, so this one I might draw it a little thinner, the right side I draw a little bit thicker, and then I add in the middle. So the middle is just almost like a triangle. Okay, and we're gonna continue to keep adding on the left, adding to the right, and then adding a middle. So as you can see, it's starting to veer off a little bit to the left. If yours is starting to veer off to the left, I want you to come back to the center. Imagine there's a line in the center. If you need a center line, go ahead and draw the center line to keep yourself straight, okay? And then continue to add on. I think the more uh, varied the petals or the, the pineapple leaves are, the better. And they're spiky, so continue to just keep adding where left and right um, it doesn't have to be right in the middle, but you do want each petal to be a little bit random, okay? So I think that height is actually pretty scaled, um, and if I want to measure this so that you are following along with me, it's probably another an inch and a quarter above the box, okay? And that's where I'm going to end, is right about there. I don't want to go too high because it's not going to be proportioned. So hopefully you can see that, and then... Um, I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you there. Okay, so now that we have our sketch, um, at least this part, I'm gonna now draw in the skin of my pineapple. And to do that, I'll start at the base. So start right at the base. And you can draw almost a triangle, okay? Triangle right in the center. And then you're gonna keep adding almost small hills on each side of that. Um, that original center. Okay, and you're going to continue to add 
all the way across. And what you're going to do is every line that you complete, the line above it, the hills will sit almost right in the middle of the previous hill, if that makes sense. So you don't want them to all line up straight, you want them to alternate. So you can go all the way across, and they can be random, They can some can be bigger, some can be smaller, but you're just drawing hills all the way across, okay? And pineapple shapes, um, or the skin, has almost a rough looking skin. So it's not as perfect all the way across. So try to be as random as you can, but you're, in ways it's a little random, but it's also going in one straight line. So just add in as much as you can. Some can be a little bit bigger and just use this framework to keep inside of that pineapple. Okay, and make these hills a little bit, you know, bigger. I think some people tend to draw too small, so just make sure the scale is proportioned to the rest of the pineapple. All right, so there is pretty much the shape of our pineapple, and it's pretty simple. Um, now, once I have this done, I'm going to go in and start to erase. And you're going to take your kneaded eraser or any eraser that you, you have. In this case, I have my kneaded eraser and I'm going to erase all the bounding boxes. So that center line that I drew, I'm going to try to erase that. I'm going to go in and pull off some of this dark um, graphite so that I'm left behind with a really light sketch. You definitely always want to um, start out with a light sketch. Okay. So if, if you can try to get around some of the, the grids that we created and erase that as much as possible, that would be good because once you lay down your color, it's gonna be really hard to start to pull off. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm gonna start with my watercolor first. Um, I definitely want to start with something uh, with the water. If I'm doing both, if I'm coloring with Copics and watercolor, I start the base with watercolor first. Um, one, because the Copic markers have, it's alcohol based and I want that to be almost towards the last end of the step. Okay, so now I have my brushes. I'm using a 12 round and an eight round. And so um, this isn't any particular brand, but you know, um, I just picked this up at a local art store. And I think you can even find these at Michael's. Make sure it's a watercolor brush. But I will start with the smaller brush first, the eight round um, for the body of this. And then I will use kind of the bigger 12 round for backgrounds. Okay, so let's start with picking up some light yellow. So I'm using my palette. I'm gonna pick the lightest yellow first. And watercolor is a little tricky because I think um, if you haven't experimented with watercolor or if this is your first time, the, the part of watercolor that um, you wanna remember is that you don't wanna add too much water and you don't wanna put too little water. So you kinda of have to play around with um, how much water you're adding. So my tip for the day is have a cup ready, dip once in the water, and then drag it maybe twice along the edge of your cup to kind of run out that excess water, and then start to dip in the color or the pigment. I do it maybe two or three times, and then I kind of run it on the side of uh, the, the palette to run off that extra or that excess water. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in a way, I'm just dabbing on the left side of each square. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna dab on each side of the square. Okay, it's okay to leave a little bit of white. Um, we're just gonna, the point of watercolor and what I love about watercolor, it is very forgiving. So you wanna make sure you have a napkin um, so that you can pick off some extra graphite, or sorry, extra water in case you do overwater your drawing. Okay, as I let this first layer dry, I'm gonna move on to the, um, 
the pineapple leaves and by doing so I've done the water situation I've gone in dipped it once and then I run it two or three times on the edge and then I dip it to my color okay and then here I'm picking a light shade of green and then I'm dipping in a few times and then I'm pulling it on the edge of this circle palette here to run off the excess water okay I'm gonna get in a little tighter and so again I'm gonna follow my lines and I'm gonna color watercolor or paint the edge of the petals again try to leave some maybe half of the petal white if you're running out of color go ahead continue to dip in So as you can see, there's a little bit of white. I'm not coloring the whole thing in. And I came in a little bit more with color. And the technique I like to use mostly is uh, wet on dry, which means that my, my paintbrush is wet, but I'm applying it to a dry surface, okay? And there's other techniques in watercolor, like wet on wet, where you can lay down water on the paper and then the paintbrush is wet and you're applying wet to wet. Um, but in my case here, I'm doing wet to dry, okay? So sometimes I have a blow dryer um, to dry out the layers just to speed up the process. And sometimes I just have a, another watercolor paper or something thick that I can um, fan dry the first layer. And then from there, I will add the second layer, okay? So I choose kind of a little bit of a darker yellow medium tone, and I might dip it back in the lighter tone, okay? And then I'll go over again, just like how I did the first layer, and I'm barely touching the paper. I'm just applying color on the left side, showing, allowing the first color to shine through. Okay, and I'm gonna continue to let that first layer dry. And then I will clean off my brush to now move into my green uh, leaves. So going in and dipping a little bit of a darker green, not too dark, okay? And then I'm gonna run the excess right on the edge. And then I'll go in and continue to use my eight round brush so if you start to see puddling on your watercolor paper, what I want you to do is I want you to take a napkin and just pull off the excess, okay? Um, the beauty of watercolor is that you can, in a way, erase by adding more water and then just pulling it off. So if you feel like you've added color in areas that you didn't want, um, you can add more water to your paper and then pull it off using the napkin. And it's a good idea to let the watercolor dry in between the layers um, before you start the next color. Because the more water you add, the more warping will happen and you don't want that on your paper. Okay, so just make sure you're drying in between each layer. And now I will work on my third layer, which is a little bit darker, maybe kind of like a light yellow, I'm sorry, a light orange, and then I'll mix it with that middle yellow. Okay, I'll add two colors together, and then I'll just come back in and paint the, a little bit of the remaining part of this, continuing to just dot through, um, I'm not really giving much um, thought into where. Okay, and 
it's okay to leave a little bit of white. As you can see, I didn't color the whole thing. So that is the key, you guys, is to leave a little bit of white in this. And now I'm gonna move on to a darker shade of green for our pineapple leaves. So I'm just working in layers here. And what I did is I dipped it in the dark and then into the middle tone. And by mixing those two, I get kind of a nice shade. And if it's not dark enough, I'll dip in again and just add a little bit more here. The point is to be able to see all three shades. And I hope you guys are practicing with me or continue to practice. Um, I almost wanna see before and afters of your sketches and of your pineapple, because it's always great for me to see um, progress. Um, watercolor is something we don't go over in our tours. We go through just Copics. So I hope this is a little bit of a bonus for you guys who are watching along, is that in my live tours, we focus only on Copics, one, because I, I want people to get used to a medium before they, and the concepts, before we move on to something a little bit more advanced, which I feel like watercolor can be, if it's your first time. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that. It's a little bit um, abstract at this point. And at this point, if you wanna go in and do a little bit more erasing before we add our next step, go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we're on to our Copic phase or our second portion of our pineapple, I want you to lay out all the colors that you have. Um, set it close to you so it's within reach and put it in the order that you're gonna color it in. For me, I, I'm gonna start with the skin of the pineapple. I'll start with um, my YG00 and then I'm gonna use my brush in. It has two ends to this, so what I want you to do is pull the brush end. Uh, I like it because it allows me to control it a little bit better. If I am doing larger surfaces, I would use the chiseled end. But for this case, we're only gonna bring in the brush side and then you're gonna start coloring in. Okay, and make sure that the watercolor is completely dry before you apply this color or the Copics. I really uh, love these markers because it makes it um, more saturated in color. So with watercolor, I like to keep things pastel. And then the Copics are to add another layer and dimension to our drawing. Okay, so now I've come in with my second yellow and that's Y08 if you are following along with me. And then you're gonna color in on the left side here. and it can be random. And then our last color is more of an earthy tone. I've pulled my image um, on my iPhone and I'm looking at it while I'm coloring so that I know um, one for color matching and also as a point of reference. I do a lot of things in conceptual so it doesn't have to look exactly like the, um, the image reference but I am using it for color reference. So in this case, I pulled an E33 and this just grounds our bright yellow just a little bit more. It tones it down just a little bit, okay? And then I'm kind of going in and doing a C pattern on each of the, the uh, I mean, for better lack of the word, uh, the triangles or the hills that we've created. I'm just going in on each one of them and creating C's all the way through, okay? So it's not really perfect right now. It looks pretty rough. Um, I'm done with the skin and now I'm going to add in my greens. And so let me start out with a YG23. 
Okay, again, using the brush end, I'm gonna start from the base and then fan out because what ends up happening is you get more of a feathered, and it thins out, right? So once you lay down your marker, it's gonna be thick at the base and then it thins out. So that's why I want you to start from the base and just pull out your color. And don't let the marker sit too long on the paper because it's going to bleed through. Um, I've had in the past uh, questions about using watercolor and Copic. Do you always have to use watercolor paper? And the answer to that is no. Sorry, I pulled a G14 for the next color. And I'm just going through, but notice how I leave a little bit of white on the edges of each of the, um, the pineapple uh, leaves. Okay, and that's to show a little bit of highlights. And then we've got a YG63, again using the brush end. This is to anchor the color. It's to show kind of the undertones and the shadowing. So I like to do that kind of in between the petals um, where they overlap each other. So I'll put a little bit of this deeper color right underneath it, okay? Okay. So I think that's good. Um, as you can see, it's just a lot of jumble of colors. It looks a little abstract, um, but hopefully you have something that looks like this. Again, you still have an opportunity to start erasing. So if there's some pencil marks that you still see, go ahead and use this opportunity to erase. Okay. Okay, gang, so the last part of this and my most favorite part is the finishing details. Um, I have a few detail pens that I saved to the very end um, and that is, um, you'll start to see the transformation from here. A lot of people like to keep watercolor a little bit more abstract, but for me, I'm an illustrator as well, which means that I like a little bit more graphic elements to my illustrations. And so I will finish it off with a black ink. Um, I recommend the Micron uh, 01 tip. So you'll notice the tip is listed at the top there. Um, and it comes in different uh, tip widths or you know how fine or thick the point is. And it's good to be able to control your thickness and thinness with maybe just one pen. And you can get away with that just using one pen. And then I have gel pens, my gold and my white as finishing details, okay? So let me zoom in here so that you can see where and how I've colored in. So go ahead and start with the black first. This step is kind of a, uh, I think a lot of people get nervous because it's a little bit more permanent. Um, there's no way to erase this part, but um, have faith, you guys. Uh, get your palm a little bit uh, more secure on the uh, surface of your paper. And I want you to create quick movements. Okay, so the first line is usually the the scariest so just draw in and just in fact let this let the uh, watercolor completely dry before you add in this black color and move through each petal I'm sorry not petal hill or shape quickly move fast don't let it sit on the paper just don't think about it just go through it as fast as you can without um, fast and deliberate if that makes sense okay so if you're going too fast you might not you know you might not have a, a solid stroke so don't go so fast that you're creating uh, light strokes but I want you to go in a little quick but also with intention on each of these lines okay and don't worry about it matching the pencil line underneath so much as you know just going through moving a little faster each time it does take a little bit of practice to get through but just keep adding these shapes don't worry too much about where it's sitting okay and as you get to the closer to the stem you'll notice that it does get a little bit smaller Okay, Okay. so now that's the skin of my pineapple. And here, 
now that I've kind of covered all my petals, it's a little bit tricky to see my how my lines are, but if you have your photo in front of you, I often have my iPhone or an image um, printed out. So, you know, in this case, if I'm looking at my iPhone, I'm just looking back and forth to compare, right? To see where the petals kind of turn and how they're, they're looking. So I use that as my reference point a lot. And you can do the same. Okay. So just slowly go through each petal. You can take a little bit slower approach here. Again, if you can go a little bit faster, um, maybe a little slower than you did with the, um, the skin of the pineapple. But if you go too fast, what ends up happening is you won't get a solid stroke and it'll kind of leave um, a streaky line, which may or may not be the effect you're going after. Okay, and it's okay that I didn't draw, you know, where my watercolor is. You see there's a slight, like, watercolor on the outside. That's okay. I think um, it's always nice to have a little imperfection, especially when it comes to something um, as kind of artistic as this. Um, so don't worry too much about not having the color sit within the petal. So if you get close to the image, um, you'll see that there's a little bit of jagged edges on each petal. So just go through and add zigzags and it doesn't even have to line up or be perfect. Just go through and show some of these uh, teeth. <laughs> I guess I call them teeth, but these little spikes on each of the uh, pineapple edges. Add those in. Okay. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just add them in because it is a small detail and I think um, adds to the pineapple. Okay. So all I did is I went through each of the petals and added little teeth on the ends. Okay. And then what I want you to do now is I want you to start going in and um, drawing diagonal lines on every, you can alternate, okay? You don't have to go on every one of them. Just alternate to add some texturing. And it just adds a little bit more dimension, which is kind of fun to see something pop off here. And then go in and start, you can dot and add stipples. That's a technique that I go over in class. But just go in and dot so you so this image isn't so flat. Okay, and you can even cross hatch them by adding another diagonal line through some of the lines you did before. What I don't want to see is lines going everywhere, okay? Whatever you do on one, just keep it consistent on either the direction. You don't want to change directions on another uh, box, but just keep them consistent. And I will do that in, in the petals as well. So I'll just go through and add some diagonal on a few of them. And again, what I'm saying is keep the lines consistent. You can kind of go in and underneath right here where the petal meets the, the body of the pineapple, you can darken it. So use the black, kind of shade in a little bit, just darken it just a little to show kind of some detail here. And you can kind of go in between each one of them and do that. Just darken some of them. And I like to see some variations in the pen stroke. So go around the pineapple and outline it one more time to give it a little bit of a thickness to it. Okay. Um, 
um, okay, I'll save the last uh, step for the black ink a little bit later. So one step right before this, um, I wanna add in my watercolor. So I'm actually gonna pull back my watercolor or add in my background on this. Okay, so this is the step, this step is kind of an impromptu step, but I want to add a background color to this pineapple so it's not just sitting on white paper. So what I'm going to share with you is um, the Dr. P.H. Martins. It's a very saturated, concentrated watercolor, so a little goes a long way. And really all you need is a dab. I've, I have some dried here, which can be reused, but basically you just take the the dropper and then you put a little bit, I mean a little bit goes a long way, seriously. Um, this whole bottle here could probably last me a whole lifetime. All right, and then I'm gonna take my larger brush, which is the 12 round, and I'm gonna dip and then I'm going to run it on the edge twice, okay? And then I'll dip it right into the, as you can see, I barely had to dip. I don't want to dip in the, the whole uh, blue, but just right at the edge so I can pull out the color and see how much I'm actually using. So make sure that you're not adding water to the entire um, watercolor concentrate, but just pull the edge out. And then again, I'm gonna use the edge to make sure I'm not, um, I'm running the excess off the edge of that. Okay. So the tricky thing here is even though our black ink is waterproof, if you get too close to the edge after you've inked your drawing, uh, you will get a little bit of, um, mm, it's gonna pull some of that black in, okay? So try as best as you can, use your brush and get close to the edge. So kind of do an outline, right? That's kind of how I think of it. Do an outline or create an outline on the edge of the pineapple, but work a little fast because you want to pull out the color, okay? So as I get there, if I'm not working fast enough, it's gonna dry before I get to pull out the color. Okay, just kind of work around this pineapple So as you can see, I didn't have to re-dip in my water, but you'll see that it naturally lightens up as you get to the other side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of do a zigzag and pull out and blend out the blue. Okay, it's already starting to dry. If you don't go fast and work fast, it starts to dry a little bit. And it creates kind of a harsh line, so you you do have to work a little fast with the watercolor, especially on the concentrated stuff. Okay, and then I want it a little bit darker, so I went back in. So I try to stay conservative with my color. Um, and I wanted the right side to be a little bit more deeper in color. So I'm just kind of pulling out. And if you notice, some of the edging here, um, if I'm pulling off the page, but then some of it streaks out where it looks like some of it's dry, I can do that too. I can kind of pull out um, to give that kind of effect. And you can just play around with your brush. Um, For this tutorial, we won't go into too much detail on how to create these effects, but um, I created a shadow there. That's kind of why I did the darker color, but as you can see, I got a little too close to the black, so it kind of ran um, a, a green on it. So that's okay. It You won't see it too much. Um, try not to get too close to the pineapple when you are watercoloring. And then from here, I'm gonna try to speed up the drying process by just fanning out using another watercolor paper. I'm gonna let that dry a little and try to get it to dry as much as I can. 
Okay, so now that we're on this step, this should be the final step. This is where I'm going to add in my gel colors. So pull in your gold gel pen and then just go in a few of the, um, the, the rough skin <laughs> and add in kind of high, you know, just kind of add in a little bit of these details. Again, I'm just drawing on the left side, adding C's all the way through. I don't do it on every single one. I just want a little shimmer to draw a little bit of attention to that fun texture that pineapples have. But I don't want to cover all the highlights or the, the fun things that we created earlier, okay? All the textures. So just highlight a little bit of that and then now I bring in some white. The white works well when you have a dark kind of color behind it, right? So if I'm, this, if I color it on the pineapple, you wouldn't see it as much. So I try to do it when I have a darker color and then I'll kind of come in and add more texturing. Um, again, I can come in diagonal, uh, adding diagonal lines on a few of these just to show a little bit more texture and to show the highlights. So wherever you feel that you can add color or white, go ahead and add it, okay? But it just adds a little bit of extra fun. And then sometimes I add curly cues to this. It's just my way of adding a little bit more fun element to that. And it just was a little, kind of like a pigtail, a curly cue. Um, and I'll let that dry a little bit. And I'll add the black. And again, try to let your, try to let the layers dry in between so that when you are um, adding jello or then finishing it with the black that it, that it actually dries so that it doesn't smear. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is I want to sign my work. And I typically just sign it right at the bottom or on the edge of the drawing. And there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson and definitely be sure to share this with me. Tag me um, either at the sketchbook series or at Very Mary Inspired. Leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you guys think, what other things we should um, introduce. If you like this tutorial, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear it. And have a good day and share with me your pineapples.